Hey everybody, this is Industrial Action. I wanted to give you a quick video today to talk a little bit about the wiring of Igniter. I've seen a bunch of questions come up recently on the Imperial Royal Arms forum, so I wanted to uh, just do something real quick to show you guys how basically to wire Igniter. Um, the ease of use and how it's done. So, I'm not actually going to wire the board, I don't have a build going on right this moment, but I wanted to show you basically what Igniter looks like, uh, what the pads are, and a technique for soldering to them. So you can see here I've got my soldering station, and I have this set to just a little over 350 degrees. Um, that is what I use for mine, and that is Celsius, not Fahrenheit, so Fahrenheit is up here. Uh, you can see it's a little bit, just under 700 degrees. So, got my chisel tip here, you can see that. I have my little cleaning device here. I've got my silver bearing solder, and this is what you want to get. And then I have a jar of flux. And this is the little tool I use to dab the flux on. So. This is Igniter. This is the main board. This is what it looks like. Uh, you can see here that you've got the micro SD card slot, you've got your clash sensor, all the other components, and if you flip it over, get in focus, you can see all the pads are labeled. So you've got your main switch, your aux switch, battery, speakers, these are your Axon LEDs, this is your uh, LED wiring for your flash pads, this will go to true color and your main. So, put that down for a second. This right here is true color. So you can see it's a small little board. Um, I often mount it right on top just to save space. If you look underneath it, it is also labeled. So these correspond to the pads here on Igniter. So basically you are going to wire it, if you're going to use true color, wire true color to igniter. So again you would just extend it, and again I like to mount it like this. So that's my personal way of doing it. Now for the wiring, uh, right here I have some, I believe this is 28 gauge wire. I usually use 26, 28, or 30 depending on the build. Um, I really like this stuff because I was able to order a ribbon of it, and I'll show you here. I got this on eBay. So, this is multicolored ribbon wire, and what I basically do is just rip off the section that I need uh, in the color that I want and cut it to size. And that's the 28 gauge. Uh, if you order 30, it usually only comes in one color. So, this is 30. I've used this. This is blue. Uh, people who like to color code their wires probably won't want to use this, but it fits in nice tight builds. So, anyway, what you're going to do is take your wire cutters, make sure that you have the right wire cutters. You can see in there it is marked for what you're trying to cut. This is the stranded side, this is the solid side. Um, I use stranded wire. Scott and or Nigon and others prefer to use solid um, when wiring to the board to keep down flyaways. I don't have any solid, so I use stranded. So anyway, you're going to go through here, line it up, take a little bit off, and then I pre-tin this. So what I would do is I would take a piece of solder, I would heat up my iron, put it in my helping hands device, which you can see I've heat shrink these so that they don't cut through the wires and the little alligator things, and heat it up and just dab it. Give it a little bit of solder. So this would become essentially a solid piece of wire anyway. Then you take it and you stick it through the board and the pad you want like that. Um, again you would set this up in your helping hands. You probably wouldn't be holding it. Put a little bit of flux on there. Then you're going to take your tip of your iron, touch the pad and the wire at the same time and then put a little bit of solder on that and it'll seal up nice and tight. It'll look beautiful. And that's really all there is to it. You would wire up all your pads um, in the order that you need to do it. 
Again, you need to measure it out and things like that to make sure that you're not making a mess of your wiring. But as far as wiring to the board itself goes, again, it's all pretty self-explanatory. It's all labeled. The holes are nice and big and it's easy to get your wire through and then a wire to them. So that's really all there is to it. Um, I'll do a more comprehensive video when I, the next time I actually have to wire the board. But for now, I just wanted to put this out there so that you guys can take a look at it and get an idea of what's involved. So enjoy.